Welcome back to the Kutubat channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and today the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates by 75 basis points, which is three quarters of a percent. And so in just a moment, I'll be explaining what that means for Bitcoin and Ethereum and where we could be heading next. So definitely stick around. First of all, just starting off the video with the recent 75 basis point hike, which is basically the Federal Reserve increasing the federal funds rate by 75 basis points or three quarters of a percent. And so this has now taken the federal funds rate, also known as the Fed's interest rate, from 1% up to 1.75%. And as I discussed in my last video, this was one of the most expected outcomes from the Fed meeting, because before last Friday, the majority were expecting a 50 basis point hike originally, and then we got the CPI data coming in on Friday, last Friday, which basically showed us that inflation actually got a lot worse during May, which is not what the Fed and Jerome Powell were originally expecting. And so due to the inflation numbers coming in a lot worse than expected last Friday. That then created the expectation of a 75 basis point hike in this Fed meeting, which is basically what we got. And so because of the fact that we got the outcome that the majority were expecting after Friday, we actually did not see any significant downside price action in the overall markets, talking about the stock market and the crypto markets, immediately after the Fed meeting and after this news came out. And that's simply because if the majority in the market starts expecting something, they start pricing it in in advance. So considering the fact that the Fed is basically hiking rates alongside what the majority are expecting and the majority get those expectations from what the inflation numbers are, what CPI is coming in at, then really it's the CPI data, the inflation numbers that are actually more important at the moment because especially as of recent months, the inflation numbers that are coming in have proved to be leading indicators for what the Fed is about to do and also leading indicators for what markets are about to do because of course if the Fed raises interest rates higher than expected, that is more bearish and if they lower interest rates, that is bullish. And the main reason as to why the Fed would raise rates higher than expected is if inflation comes in higher than expected like it did on Friday. So obviously between Friday and today, we saw a lot of bearish price action in that time period. But today, after we got this result, we did not see any more significant bearish price action immediately after this result due to the fact that this has pretty much already been priced in. And not long after we got the recent 75 basis point hike, Jerome Powell held his usual press conference. And one of the things he said in that press conference was that either a 50 basis point or 75 basis point increase seems most likely at our next meeting. And so there's a very high chance that the majority in the market have already priced in either a 50 basis point hike or another 75 basis point hike happening next month because of course the next Fed meeting is on the 27th of July. But once again, it is important to remember that between now and the next Fed meeting, we do have more inflation data, more CPI data coming out, which is actually happening on the 13th of July. And of course, that will be the inflation data for this month of June. And so when we get that information in about a month from now, that would likely tell us what direction the Fed might be taking in the next Fed meeting towards the end of July, whether it's a 50 basis point hike or another 75 basis point hike, depending on inflation or something even worse, if inflation gets a lot worse. And if that's the case, we would likely start seeing that getting priced into the market on the 13th of next month when we see that inflation number. And just taking a quick look at the US stock market today, this right here is the NASDAQ 100 index on the daily timeframe. And today has actually been a green day. We've seen a bit of a short term bounce because the market got what it expected, which reduces uncertainty, therefore reducing risk. And so it's actually quite possible that between now and when we see the next inflation numbers in around a month from now, we could actually see a bit of sideways price action, maybe even a bit of a relief rally in the stock markets, like what we saw in May and early June before we got that bad inflation data last Friday, or like what we saw back in March, where we actually saw a decent short term rally after a Fed meeting before the next inflation data came out. And so Overall, because we got the news that the majority were already expecting, this is actually fairly good news in the somewhat shorter term. But of course, we are not out of the woods yet. We are still in a clear downtrend. This is just talking about the shorter term. And this slight bounce in the stock market has also transferred over to the short term Bitcoin price action. This right here is on the four hour time frame. And you can see that in recent hours, especially following the Fed meeting, we saw some short term bullish price action, which is also coming just after we saw a bullish divergence form on the four hour Bitcoin chart. But but keep in mind, this is all talking about the shorter term, because generally speaking, a four hour bullish divergence usually lasts for a few days. And in most cases, it starts wearing off within about a week. But either way, the situation in the 
shorter term is looking better today than it was yesterday. And of course, this has come at a great time because if you're looking at the monthly Bitcoin charts right here, Bitcoin was retesting the old 20K all time high that we set back in 2017. And throughout Bitcoin's entire price history, the Bitcoin price has never dropped below one of its previous cycle all time highs. So for example, the 2013 bull market top was just above $1,000 per Bitcoin. And if you're looking at the bottom of the 2018 bear market, which was the next major bear market, the Bitcoin price bottomed out at around $3,000 per Bitcoin. So we did not go below the previous cycles bull market all time high. And as of right now, at least at the time of recording this video, the Bitcoin price has currently not gone below that previous 2017 bull market top, which is good to see. We do have major support at around $20,000 per Bitcoin. And also if you're looking at the month monthly Bitcoin RSI, we're at all time low levels in the monthly RSI, which means on the monthly chart, Bitcoin is currently more oversold than it has ever been before. And you can say something similar about the weekly Bitcoin RSI being oversold as well. Right now, we're more oversold than what we saw at the end of the 2018 bear market, which means technically speaking, based on the RSI indicator alone, right now, we're technically getting a better deal at the moment than what we got at the end of the 2018 bear market. And I know a lot of you might say, well, the Bitcoin price is clearly a lot Lot higher than $3,000 per Bitcoin. But keep in mind, back then in 2018, there was a lot less going for Bitcoin. For example, the hash rate was a lot lower. There was less users. There was almost no institutions getting involved like MicroStrategy or Tesla back then. We also had no countries adopting Bitcoin as a currency back then as well. So there's a lot more going for Bitcoin right now, which is why the relative cheap price for Bitcoin based on the RSI is at a much higher value. Because when you think about how much infrastructure has been built around Bitcoin, like all of the exchanges, Exchanges, the ETFs, all of that sort of stuff, then fundamentally speaking, Bitcoin right now is a safer bet than what we saw back in 2018 for a long-term investment. Of course, that's not financial advice. That's just simply going off Bitcoin's fundamentals. And of course, we can also look at other indicators like the 200-week moving average, which is the red line right here. And back in the 2018 bear market, we basically bottomed out right around that 200-week moving average. During the March 2020 crash, on the other hand, we did see a weekly candle close around that 200-week moving average. But we actually saw a wick in the Bitcoin price all the way down towards the 300 week moving average. And in both of these previous Bitcoin bottoms, of course, we saw the Bitcoin price drop below the 1000 day moving average, which is the green line. And so far, we've obviously dropped below the 1000 day moving average. We've also dropped slightly below the 200 week moving average, like what we saw in March 2020. But at least as of right now, we have not seen a wick down towards the 300 week moving average, which is coming into play at around $17,000 per Bitcoin. But obviously, the price of Bitcoin is not guaranteed to go down to those much lower levels just because we saw it that one time during March 2020 because this right here was an extremely rare occurrence. So yes, technically speaking, it is not impossible for the Bitcoin price to go lower, like for example, down towards that 300 week moving average like March 2020. But right now, my personal Bitcoin strategy, my long-term investing strategy is to dollar cost average quite heavily into Bitcoin at the moment in these low $20,000 prices. But of course, that is not financial advice for you. That's just telling you what I'm doing with my own money. And if you take a look at the Bitcoin long positions on the Bitfinex exchange, right now they are still smashing into new all-time highs, which means the whales on this exchange are continuing to add more and more money to their Bitcoin long positions, which means they're doubling down on their bet for the Bitcoin price to go back to the upside sometime soon. And if you're looking at the last time we saw a lot of Bitcoin long positions on this particular exchange open up like this, that was basically leading up to the middle of last year. And of course, during the middle of last year, that's when we saw the Bitcoin price bottom out, which is very interesting and just something to keep in mind. And now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the weekly Ethereum to US dollar chart. And as I've been saying over the past few days, we have a lot of support around this 38.2% Fibonacci level, which is coming into play in between 1000 and 1.1k, more specifically at around 1050 to 1060. And so far at the time of recording this video, the price of Ethereum has found a decent amount of support at that support level. And also keep in mind, Ethereum is currently more oversold on the weekly charts than we've ever seen before, according to the weekly Ethereum RSI. And upon doing further research, one of the main reasons why we have have been seeing a lot of bearish price action, especially for Ethereum in recent weeks, is due to the fact that we're seeing a lot of liquidations happening in DeFi. 
And I won't go too deep into this in this video because this is really a big story to cover, but I have been covering it bit by bit over on my Twitter. And this can also be somewhat related to what's happening with Celsius. And by the way, there's really no new updates for Celsius today. So if you want to know more about the Celsius situation, check out my last video on the channel. But basically there's quite a lot of debt built up in DeFi and a big chunk of that debt is getting quite close to liquidation. This is just one loan right here that is holding around 212,000 Ethereum worth well over 218 million US dollars. And today this actually got very close to liquidation. Basically, if the price of Ethereum drops below $1,000, then this loan holding over $200 million worth of Ethereum starts getting liquidated, which basically means a bunch of that Ethereum starts getting dumped onto the market. And especially in recent weeks, we've actually already been seeing that happening in DeFi with some slightly smaller loans getting liquidated. And so basically this big liquidation cascade is driving a lot of the selling pressure at the moment, especially for Ethereum, but really driving a lot of the crypto market to the downside. And so let's just hope Ethereum does not go below $1,000 because that would be very bad for this loan and really the overall market. And by the way, if you want to get extra important information like this in real time, like Celsius updates in real time, for example, make sure to follow me over on my Twitter and the link to my Twitter is in the description down below and also in the pinned comment. And just taking a look at the short term Ethereum price action, it's basically the same story as the short term Bitcoin price action. We have this small bullish divergence here on the four hour chart. And in the hours immediately following the interest rate hike, we've actually seen some slight bullish price action because that's a bit of uncertainty reduced from the market once again. And so when you're talking about the shorter term as in the next few days, the same as what I said for Bitcoin on the four hour chart can also be applied for the Ethereum four hour chart as well. And just giving you a quick update on the Ethereum short positions, right now they're trading very close to all time low levels, but we have seen a slight wick to the downside, which means we've seen a small amount of short positions open back up. But relatively speaking, the shorts on Ethereum over on Bifnex are actually very, very low according to the history of these short positions over on Bifnex, which means the whales on that particular exchange think the room to the downside is somewhat limited while there's major risk for more upside price action in Ethereum. Because of course, if you're in a short position, the risk is upside price action. And now giving you a quick update on the Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart here on the weekly timeframe. Right now, we're actually seeing a bit of a short term bounce from this trend line right here coming into play at around 0.048 Bitcoin per Ethereum. But overall, if you're looking at the bigger picture here, Ethereum versus Bitcoin is still at some very elevated levels. And so I'll be watching this trend line very closely because if we break below that line of support that I just mentioned, then we could see a lot more downside price action for Ethereum versus Bitcoin, which basically means Ethereum could continue underperforming against Bitcoin. And one of the fundamental reasons as to why I am more bearish for Ethereum versus Bitcoin on the larger timeframes here, despite the trend itself being a bearish trend, is due to the fact that a lot of Ethereum's value comes from people using Ethereum and especially applications built on top of Ethereum, like altcoins and NFTs, for example. And back in Ethereum's first major bull market, which was the 2016-2017 bull market, Ethereum performed incredibly well in that bull market. There was massive demand for Ethereum in the bull market due to the fact that a lot of altcoins were launching on Ethereum. They were being built on top of Ethereum. And of course, during the bull market, a lot of the altcoins went crazy. And the majority of altcoins, like I said, were built on Ethereum, which means you need Ethereum to pay gas transactions and all of that sort of stuff. But then after the 2017 bull market, as we entered into the 2018 bear market, we saw a lot of that altcoin hype die down, which actually reduced the demand for Ethereum. And we saw Ethereum versus Bitcoin really go down. And I was personally in the market back then, back in 2017, 2018, when all of that was happening. And I can say this time around in the 2020, 2021 bull market, instead of the massive amounts of coins launching on Ethereum, like what we saw back in 2017, that was driving up Ethereum in the bull market. This time around, we saw a massive amount of NFTs really launching and booming on Ethereum in this bull market. But if you've been paying attention in recent months, obviously NFTs have really started to cool down. The hype has definitely started to slow down. And so due to that, there's simply less activity at the moment on Ethereum, less demand for Ethereum, which is one of the fundamental reasons as to why I am bearish on Ethereum versus Bitcoin at the moment at least. But of course, Ethereum, in my opinion, is a long-term investment. Even though as of right now, at this stage in the market, I am bearish on Ethereum. Super long-term, talking about five to 10 years from now, I'm extremely bullish on Ethereum. But anyway, if you found this video useful, definitely check out this video popping up right here on your screen, which can help you make money in crypto even when prices are going down. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.